What's cracking, big dogs? Woo! Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is B D G E, and today we're looking ahead. We've looked behind enough. We've been looking behind the entire off season, talking about last year's points, last year's stats, last year's numbers, all that shit. It's time to look ahead. And I don't really typically do any sort of strength of schedule content because I think it's kind of fucking stupid, to be honest with you, trying to project what a defense is going to look like 14 weeks down the road. And, you know, some people might think it's worthwhile. We know what the elite defenses are. We know what the really shitty defenses are. But everything in between, anyone from defenses ranked like number nine through twenty. Two, they're all interchangeable. We have no idea where they're actually going to end up at the end of the year. So I think it's hard to predict those kind of things as opposed to offenses, because a lot of what an offense does is predicated on one player, the quarterback on a defense. Yeah, they could have some good skill players. They can have some impact players, but there's nothing that impacts the entire game as much as a quarterback. So year over year, it's very difficult to predict how a defense will perform because there's not one player that impacts the whole the whole scheme, the whole personnel, all that kind of shit. So today we're going to look forward to five players that when we look bike on this year were the most rostered players on championship rosters. You know, like a couple of years ago, when you look back at the Lamar Jackson MVP season, Lamar Jackson was on a shitload of rosters. Okay. We want to, we want to do a little bit of a, a prediction episode today. It's going to be based on a few things, something to do with rookies because they get a lot more playing time at the end of the year. Some to do with just the playoff schedules altogether, some to do with injuries, things like that. Okay. So I'm ready to roll. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow's video will be five players least likely to be rostered on championship teams in 2021 fantasy football. Before we kick this bad boy off, let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. The first player on the list of players most likely to be rostered on championship teams this year in fantasy football is Trey Lance. It's actually the entire San Francisco 49ers offense. And a lot of this is going to have to do with offenses as a whole because of this, uh, the playoff schedule is here. Trey Lance, because he's not been announced a starter yet, because he now got hurt, he's got the finger thing or whatever, won't keep him out long. He drops in drafts, right? Had he been named the starter a couple weeks ago, he would have shot up drafts. He's going to get on the field at some point this year. And when he does, he's going to be a problem to people playing against him in fantasy football. Because you get them late in drafts, that means you obviously get to load up on the front of your roster. And when you look at their schedule from weeks 11 through 17, Jacksonville, Minnesota, Seattle, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston, right? Remember, 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 this year, 17 games are being played in the NFL, which means most people's fantasy playoffs are being pushed back. If they were weeks 15 and 16 or weeks 14, 15, and 16, they are now weeks 15, 16, and 17. And you look at the slate there, the only teams that are like decent defenses, Minnesota is typically a pretty good defense. Seattle's average. Usually Atlanta got a little bit better at the end of the year. They've been tough against the running backs. When we look against the quarterbacks, man, there is nothing scary on that schedule. And the last three games of the season, man, Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston might be like three of the worst five passing defenses in the entire NFL. I expect Trey Lance to absolutely eat that shit up. Now, they have a stretch in the middle of their schedule, the 49ers do, where it's after their week six bye. They play Indianapolis, they play Chicago, they play Arizona, and they play the Rams, all right? So Arizona is obviously not a defense to fear, but you look at the other three teams, Indy, Chicago, LA, if we see Jimmy G struggle there, it's possible that Lance takes over right after then. It's possible he takes over before then if Jimmy G has like a three interception game prior to week six. But that looks like a tough slate of games that leads up to Jacksonville where I could see them totally putting Trey Lance into the lineup. And I think this also works with the running backs, right? I like Trey Sermon more than I like Raheem Mostert. Y'all know that. I've been very vocal about this. Uh, we know rookie running backs tend to take a while to integrate themselves into the roster as full-time players. We saw it last year with DeAndre Swift, and Cam Akers, and Jonathan Taylor. And all of the players that were picked last year uh, in the second and third rounds, they took a minute. But over the second half of the year, they were league winning type players, J.K. Dobbins, etc. Trey Sermon falls into that range where he'll definitely be in a committee to start the year, especially if Raheem Mostert is healthy. By this time in the season, it's very likely Raheem Mostert is no longer healthy. And then you look at the schedule again, fantasy points per game allowed to running backs last year. Jacksonville, third most. Minnesota, fifth most. Seattle, 17th. Cincinnati, eighth. Atlanta is a very good defense against running backs, but then that playoff schedule again, Tennessee and Houston just back to back. If you have a week one bye in the playoffs next year or this year, which is week 15 for most people that play in like 12 team leagues, uh, that playoff schedule, man, just Tennessee and Houston is 
gorgeous. So that that combo of Trey Lance and Trey Sermon is going to win some people some fantasy championships this year. And it should be no surprise that uh, the Tampa Bay passing offense should probably win some people fantasy championships this year as well. I mean, they're already a great fucking team, right? You got Tom Brady throwing the ball to Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, Gio Bernard. Like the team is fucking stacked like Pringles. And you look at the schedule 13 through 17, Atlanta, Buffalo, New Orleans, Carolina, the New York Jets. Those last two weeks, Carolina, New York Jets. I know New Orleans has been a pretty good defense. They've been pretty good against stopping the pass and whatnot, but I don't really have a lot of confidence in them being able to shut down this Tampa Bay offense. So I look at those last five games and I think Tom Brady and this passing offense go absolutely fucking nuclear. So the pieces are difficult to decipher, obviously, because there's a lot of mouths to feed there in Tampa Bay. Y'all know I like Antonio Brown. Y'all know I like Rob Gronkowski because they are the best values in drafts right now where you have to get Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in the third, fourth round. You could still get Brown in the seventh, eighth round, Gronkowski in like the 13th, 15th round, something like that. So I like them as a value. But overall, I just think Tom Brady is a key to unlocking a fantasy championship this year down the stretch, as we saw last year as well. Tom Brady and the teams that he plays for typically, you know, Uncle Bill and, and the Patriots, the reason that they're always so good, they're really good football minds and they adapt better than anybody else, which is why sometimes you'll see them start slow. Their offensive line sometimes isn't great in the beginning of the year. Their defense isn't great in the beginning of the year and their offense, you know, all these things are not always tip top shape, not formed in the beginning of the year. They get way better as the season goes along, right? Their rankings for all these different statistics start to become better and better as the year goes on because they are the best at adjusting. They are the best at adapting because Tom Brady has a huge fucking brain and he eats a lot of fat. He eats a lot of avocados and that's really good for your brain. For all y'all people out there that are into nutrition and whatnot, really important for you to eat fats. Your brain is made mostly of fats okay and speaking of nutrition okay listen healthy food does not have to be untasty healthy food does not have to be disgusting and one of the single biggest helps to me enjoying healthy food are toppings our condiments our sauces in particular not a huge hot sauce guy but god damn it do i love truff ah truff hot sauce is legitimately the best hot sauce i have ever tasted it is a luxury of hot sauce to be honest with you it is like the bentley of hot sauces it is all infused with white truffle i'm getting this shit all over my hand live lick test we're gonna leave that we're gonna leave that on my nose for the remainder of the episode this shit is so beautiful you have hot sauce you have hotter sauce black truffle infused white truffle infused they also have different lines of products they have uh Pasta sauce, which is fantastic. It's got a little bit of spice, so it makes the pasta that much more enjoyable. I know a lot of y'all think you're nice with cooking pasta. No one's really that fucking good at cooking pasta, but this is a way to make sure that your pasta comes out wonderfully. They also have spicy mayonnaise. They've got all these different sauces that are all fucking wonderful, all truffle infused. This is a luxury hot sauce brand. And if you go into truff.com right now and you use the promo code BDGE, you're going to get 20% off your order they have boxes they have bundles where you can get like all three of these together so you can try the different ones they go up in spice level they have different types of truffle infused literally you could put it on anything you could put it on your pasta you can put it on your pizza you can put it on your eggs you can put it on your fingers and lick it in the middle of a youtube video doesn't matter truff.com promo code bdge for 20 percent off yes i'm gonna leave that on my nose because i'm gonna lick that later for dinner Okay. Next up on this list, five players most likely to be on championship rosters in 2021 fantasy football. None other than Terry McLaurin of the Washington football team. The schedule is unbelievably easy for wide receivers and passing offenses. Week 11 through week 17, Carolina, Seattle, Vegas, Dallas, Philly, Dallas, Philly. They end on that sh that skid of NFC East teams with horrible passing defenses. Carolina, Seattle, Vegas, Dallas, Philly, Dallas, Philly. There is not a single scary team on that entire list going from week 11 through week 17. The only thing I was really worried about, we all know Terry's an unbelievable route runner, really, really good separator. The only reason I was a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger on him in the end of the third round was because, you know, they brought in some target competition. They brought in Curtis Samuel. They brought in Deami Brown. They brought in Adam Humphreys. These players really not concerned about Adam Humphreys, a small slot receiver that really hasn't done shit. Deami Brown, a rookie. Curtis Samuel was the guy that I think could have probably eaten up a decent amount of targets, but Curtis Samuel has been out since like early July. I don't know what is happening with that man, but it is starting to become a little bit, a little bit nerve wracking. If you're a Curtis Samuel owner, I don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know when he's going to get onto the field, but it seems, uh, it seems kind of sketchy. There's some shit going on there in Washington with Curtis Samuel, which means like all of the targets are going to Terry McLaurin. I wouldn't be surprised to see a 28% target share out of Terry. And down the stretch, you give 
Terry, these defenses, Dallas, Philly, Dallas, Philly, Vegas, Carolina. This man is going to go absolutely fucking nuts over the last seven, eight weeks of the season, and he will help you win a fantasy championship. All right, so draft Terry with confidence. The last guy on this list. So we've we've kind of done five. We might have lied a little bit, but Trey Lance and Trey, uh, and Trey Sermon. So the, the double trays, double trade up on San Francisco. Tampa Bay passing offense, so Tom Brady in particular. Terry McLaurin, and the last guy on this list is... Javante Williams, okay? And I've been very, 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 very vocal about fading Javante Williams where he's going in drafts. I've seen him go as early as the fifth round in recent weeks, fifth round, sixth round. Now, here's here's what I'm going to say about Javante Williams. Again, we we know the, the storyline, the narrative here. I said it with Trey Sermon. Rookie running backs, unless they're going into a clear workhorse situation, Najee Harris, Ezekiel Elliott, those kind of situations, don't expect them to be thrust right into a uh, featured workload, right? They're going to be in committees. And I very much expect Javante Williams to be in a committee with Melvin Gordon for the first eight weeks of the season. But after that, right, all I, I always draft with a range of outcomes in mind. I don't just say he's only going to be in a running back by committee and that's it. There's a chance that he overtakes Melvin Gordon by week six and he's the RB1 there. There's a chance that doesn't happen and they're in a committee the entire year, just how Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay were last year and the year before. You know, like every year it seems to be a committee in that Denver Broncos backfield, but they traded up for Javante. And I do think by the end of the season, Javante Williams will be the RB1 there. You combine that with the schedule that they have over the last five weeks of the season. Kansas City. Now, Kansas City is a high-flying offense, obviously, but they, I don't know if y'all you remember this, but they were awful against runners last year. Now, they were number 10 in terms of fantasy points allowed to the running back position, but in terms of yards per carry, they were bottom three. They were really, 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 really bad against running backs. And you give Javante Williams kind of a guy, uh, an efficient runner, a good ground and pounder, this type of defense to play against, he'll probably run wild. But after KC, it's Detroit, Cincinnati, Vegas, and the Chargers. The Chargers are obviously a good defense, but the other three before them, Detroit, Cincinnati, Vegas, I mean, you got to be licking your fucking lips. You got to be putting some truff hot sauce on your lips, licking it like it's fucking lipstick and trying to look pretty for a date tonight. That's what we're doing for Javante Williams. Javante Williams is our date in the fantasy playoffs. And uh, I still think just, just because the five weeks at the end of the season are sexy for him does not mean that he's worth a fifth or sixth round pick in redraft. But if you do draft him and you hold on to him and he does become the RB1 there, which most people are already assuming is going to happen, he's going to have a very, very sexy playoff run down the stretch. All right, range of outcomes. I understand that the schedule is very easy. I understand that there's a very good chance Javante Williams is very well over the last five weeks of the season. Still does not necessarily make me want to draft him early. So don't fucking waste your breath commenting on that shit. All right. I love y'all. Those are the five players that I think will be rostered on many, many championship rosters. Tried to leave out, obviously, like the C-Max and the Derrick Henrys and the Kamars. No point in wasting my breath on that shit. But these are kind of under the radar, maybe, uh, dudes that you might not have looked at the schedule. And maybe it helps you break a tie when you're on the draft board or some shit like that. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow's video will be five players least likely to be on championship rosters. Very, very similar to this. Javante Williams also on that list. No, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. Peace.